the Zelda stuff that we have to do now involves just going around looking for maps pretty much. And since there's a bunch of other side maps that I wanted to do, it made sense to just do something kind of mundane like that while this PS5 video goes on. So I'm going to press play on it. Um, I'll just leave it. I don't know when it actually kicks in. It's a couple of minutes, so I'll just leave it there and keep an eye on it. Anyway. Fifteen forty-one. I saved it. See, that's the difference between me finishing a stream at like 1pm and finishing one at 4pm. <laughs> so, here's the new shirt. Thank you, Cowdly Pastry. So, carry me with gun. Very good. And, uh... What was the book? The book, the book. I actually don't remember. Um... Oh god, it's the Resident Evil 5 art book, isn't it? Shit. <laughs> okay. Hear me, please. Oh god. Oh, it's all coming back to me now. I'm remembering we've got to go to Mother and Child Island and trade some shit, right? Um, I'm wondering if I should have somehow popped out that PlayStation thing for my own window so I could see it without looking to the right. I think it's fine. Oh, we've got this now. Um, but what we want to do is buy the other plant just in case and then go to Mother and Child Island and do some trading. I'm struggling with the camera again because I was playing Dark Souls a lot. It's in the reverse. <laughs> but plants are good! They make things pretty! Do you? No, stop talking to me! There's there's, uh, there's a few extra quests I need to do, and I the picto box one. You know, I took a picture of the moon for this guy, but he was like, that's no moon. Maybe... Why are you so proud of this terrible picture? Am I supposed to be impressed? See, I was like, surely it's this pale round thing. Something perfectly round and pale. What is more perfectly round and pale than the fucking full moon? Honestly, I don't know if that's even the answer to the quest. I just suspect it to be. Am I screwing up? Have I done something wrong? Who are you? <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I just pressed it. No! Stop pressing <laughs> by this. Oh no, it's all going wrong here. There you go, bonk. So you can decorate the town, uh, but there's also a statue, and I think the creepy statue is probably the way forward. I don't even know. So one thing I want to comment on about the PS5 video before it really kicks off. Um, the music was really cool at the start and on just basically the presentation of it with all the little stings in between stuff that were all pretty like weird Kubrick-esque surrealist shapes and stuff. Uh, and all the little musical bits. I love all that stuff. Um, I really like... I didn't really know what career to go into, and I did animation, and I've done... You know, I make music and stuff like that, but generally I just like... I, I like when music and image goes together. Like, here's the... I'll, I'll just pop this up, because... Uh, 
because I do like all of this stuff. Should be able to hear that. This is really cool audio visual um, motion graphics. That's as loud as it goes, unfortunately. But, uh, because I can't really... My, the sound all comes out of the same place right now. I didn't spend a lot of time setting this up. But anywho. Yeah, it's, I like that stuff. I think it was Maelstrom that commented about... Like, he doesn't get why people... But like being spoiled on game trailers and stuff, and it made me think about why I don't like being spoiled on game trailers, and I think it's because... It's not because... It's not like the trailers that I want to be spoiled on. Like, not specifically the game, but I just like... The experience of watching an event and being able to kind of get excited about stuff. I like to be able to react to stuff, and it's, it's kind of smeared a little bit for me if I already know what's coming. I'm just like, eh. This is one of the few times where I actually get to like genuinely genuinely feel excited about things, so that's kinda why I like like it, I think. Um right. Well we've actually got quite a quite a bunch of these. Some amount of maps already. Um we need to go there. That's two tiles west. Okay, so here's the first thing. They they opened with a trailer for a game that's been out for seven years. <laughs> Which is just like... Really? <laughs> You're gonna open with this? I mean, people still play it, so that's cool, but I thought that they would want to show some GTA 6 stuff, maybe? As like a PS5 gonna launch with GTA 6. Oh my god. Here's a hundred billion dollars. But I, uh, I assume it's just not ready to show yet. It was the same with FromSoft. Like, I was surprised uh, that they showed Demon Souls Remake. I was expecting something FromSoft, but I would have expected at least something of Elden Rain. But then if they make games the same way that I do, there's just probably nothing to show yet. Nah, that's fine. Like, I was watching it. I was not watching um, Maelstrom stream at the time. I was watching the PlayStation thing instead. So I saw it at the same time you did. I think the, the kind of the opening stuff for this is like not particularly interesting to me. Like they showed what GTA and I think coming up is some other stuff, Gran Turismo and that that I'm just kinda like completely uninterested in. No, I I actually used to work on racing sims. I worked on the Formula One franchise for a number of games and also Race Driver Grid. And uh, I've just never really liked racing sims. When I was a kid, though, I did really like uh, Gran Turismo, the first one. I was never good at it, but it was cool. They're more of a technical showcase than anything to me these days. Like, you know, how shiny can we make our cars look? Oh, here's another cool, um... Like, the glass shapes sinking into the ground. I like that. Uh, what, what was interesting to me is just how many of those different little stings they did. Because it was like... Uh, it was like they gave them to different teams and went, hey, do as many ideas as you can. Just knock them out there. Hey, friend. Not shiny enough. <laughs> yeah, if you're like really into cars and forts or races and stuff like that, then, uh, then that's your jam. For me, pff, I would rather spend my money on something else.
I, I'd happy, pl happily play it in an arcade setting, though, like with a proper setup. Okay, so here's the first speaker. I don't remember who he is. He's some British guy, but um, he he's clearly like you know color corrected and all that, and he had a decent video. But you'll notice that a lot of the other people seem really like weird. Like they've been post produced all in different ways to try and homogenize them. And there's even was it Yamauchi? He's he's genuinely a CG character. There's no fucking way he's not CG when he pops up. Ah, oh, friend, you got to get some coffee down you. All right, this is the Spider-Man. Okay, comment about the Spider-Man thing. Is it Miles Morales? Awesome that they're doing Miles Morales. Um, especially, I, I, I suspect that they kind of threw this in at the last minute as one of the opening trailers as well, given the whole, you know, Black Lives Matter movement. I figure they want to open with a strong a black lead character like this. Miles Morales is a great character, so wicked. Um, there was... Uh, you heard it's a remaster. Okay, so... There was a rev somebody commented that it was actually going to be a remaster of Spider-Man with a DLC called Miles Morales, but there's been a new official comment today that says that's not the case. It's more like it's a game on the scale of was it Uncharted Lost Legacy, where they took all the Uncharted Four assets and they basically made a decent length game, but using existing assets. So it's it's that. Think of it as like a Iceborne length expansion, which is cool. Um, I've still yet to play the first that that Spider-Man game. I hear it was really good. Okay, this I've got to fucking show this. Look at this shit. There is no way that's not a CG character. The way his T-shirt is shaded, the way the folds are, it looks like Ace Combat graphics. Color of his skin, the wooden movement of his mouth. 100% CG character. Also, they're ex I wonder if they did it on purpose just because it's polyphony and they're like, look how realistic our shit is. And then later they'll say, hey, that was CG back then, but everyone's already figured it out. <laughs> you really hurt that man's feelings. I think they did it on purpose. I think they did it so that they could um, show off their technology. But yeah, look at this. This is like... This is Gran Turismo now. It's like, hey, look at our shiny-ass cars. Uh, the one thing that will really make the difference, I think, for them going forward is ray tracing. Because, um, you know, you can only make something so shiny before it just doesn't look real anymore. But the ray traced reflections are going to be that one extra little tick that makes this look really realistic. But when I was watching this live... It was kind of crusty as fuck anyway, because it was like a 1080p stream and it was struggling to keep up. And I'm like, this doesn't really show off what it looks like. If I watched this live on a 4K screen, it would probably look a hundred times better. But yeah, I'm with you, friend. I just don't really care about GTA anymore. Um, you'll see a car pop up now, though, that looks real shiny. And they show the interior of the car. And that's that for like the hundreds of cars that are going to be in that game is an impressive feat. No, don't. Yeah, it's really hard to do um, to do anti griefing in racing games. I used to work on them, like I said. Um, it's just difficult. Hey, shooting star, Echo. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. Traveling merchant. Blah blah blah. Welcome to a commentary on PS5 video slash doing boring side quest stream. If you have any curios that might be worthy of selling, trade them to me. Alright, here. No thanks. Don't come crying to me if you regret your decision later, Jesus. Well, how about this exotic flower? Yeah, the penalties are, are so random in racing games. Again, it's sort of anti-griefing stuff as well. Just tramples all over everything. We had one in Race Driver Grade where... Hey, Peach Girl's live. Oh, pinwheel! Yes, I won that. That thing you've got doesn't look so hot, so I'll need 55 rupees. It's a fucking deal, mate. 
was I saying? Yeah, anti-griefing measures. There was one where if you reverse at the start of a race, it just kicks you out of the race. Or if you reverse for too long, it kicks you out as well. You buy pinwheel, it immediately dies, you gain the right of kindling. A judge player. I mean, that would be an interesting option. Certainly. There's not much for me to say about this trailer other than that I'm glad they're still making Ratchet & Clank games and 3D platformers using modern graphics technologies. I like the stylized approach to these games. Uh, they're fun to play. It's not the sort of thing I would buy day one at full price, but I will definitely play this at some point. I spent a long time on the, on the previous one. Also, uh, that is a really fast loading screen, those going between dimension things, even though it is a hidden loading screen. That's like three seconds on an SSD, which is pretty impressive. I'm not really focusing on the game right now, my bad. Uh, let's see if this. The judges have judges. It should be a council. <laughs> a council of, like, a, like a panel of commentators. You can also judge shit. That'd be interesting, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah. Sure, I'll take another one of those for no reason. Um, I'm trying to think of why the other merchant might be. Indictments, yeah. Great Bomb Island. Great Fish Isle and Bomb Island. So, the ones... I have to go back to the ones on Great Fish Isle and Bomb Island and trade with them the things that they haven't seen yet, but first we need to go back to Windfall and give him the pinwheel. Two, two squares away, I'm just gonna teleport because I'm lazy. So there's a, there's, you can kind of hear it, it's dead quiet. But there's this really cool effect they're doing in this Ratchet and Clank. I'm gonna show it right here, you'll see it. That. This is super, super interesting to me. I was trying to figure out how they'd done it, because it looks like he's pulling the level towards him. But I think what's happening is he's being pulled towards it, but there's this kind of reverse Hitchcock zoom going on, so it looks like the opposite is happening. Really fucking clever. Uh, I want to comment on the, the ray trace reflections on the floor and the number of... Um, the number of characters and AI and just stuff that's going on on screen is impressive, especially if that's running live, which it looks like it is, on a console. <laughs> no plants in sight, atmosphere on point, no! You get the squeak. All I care about will be the Rhino. Yeah, this I I don't know too much about Ratchet and Clank. Like I played I played that previous one a lot, but uh, I remember it had a bunch of really fucking fun weapons and shit. So I'm looking forward to this uh, in a way. But like I said, I'm not gonna get it day one. Uh, yeah, those plants popping up. That's real cool. I like that. Uh. But. Clever Hitchcock Zoom. Also, hey Karloff, hey Femfox. Um, yeah, well, this is one of those games where work will probably get it in so I can borrow it. <laughs> Wait, how do you already have the pinwheel? Oh, he's two shops.
What have I got? Um, let's get rid of this. We've already given the town floor to everyone. Yep, more flying shit in the air, that's it, friend. Like, the more the small details... All of this technology is for artists, more than anything. Like, AI can make use of it as well, obviously, and a bunch of other shit, but... The artistic capabilities of teams right now is so far ahead of what the technology is capable of rendering, that for us, it's just like, just give us more horsepower! <laughs> that's really what it's all about. We went on a rampage about Blue Point. Man, dudes run. They did a great job with Shadow of the Colossus. Um, I have heard another person, a level designer that I work with, saying he didn't like it either, but it's more because... Well, I'll go into it after this. This looks a lot like that Unreal 5 engine demo. And I figure if they want somebody to test the graphical fidelity of their new engine, uh, why not give it to the best in the business? So I'm wondering if Squeenix Luminous are using UE5, because I know they switched to UE uh, back in the day. They actually uh, put the Luminous engine to rest a little bit. I guess what project is it a working title? Yeah, it's a working title. Um, it might not even be a game, this is the thing. It looks like a game, but, uh... Only in the way the camera moves and stuff, because they've done a few things before with Visual Works team that weren't, uh, that weren't games. Where is Bomb Island? Um... UC5 went, no idea. You thought the same while it was running, they switched to UE4 when FF15 was in dev hell. Yep. Annapurna sounds like a cat food company to me. Yeah, I don't know. I got, I got, I got like a weird vibe from the name, but I really dig this aesthetic. Fifteen. Yeah, my bad. <laughs> I, I misread it, and also just didn't think to retcon that in my head. Um, this is a game where all the humans are dead and robots live everywhere, and you play as a cat, and that's basically a recipe for success, if you ask me. Also, a uh, small comment on this, probably my favourite soundtrack of the trailers that were shown so far uh, on the, in the whole event. With the exception, of course, of Bugs Next, which is a Caro Caro Car Car Benito song. Ew. Love it. Super good. Yeah, um, it's on my list. It, I, I made a list of stuff that I'm interested in. And I think the one I'm most interested in is actually coming up in a little while. In fact, it might be the next trailer. Motion graphics. This is a cool motion graphic. This is some, some nice particle work. H. Yeah, um, no one in England pronounces H with an H. <laughs> what if the SSD is the part that makes it so damn expensive? Maybe. SSDs are a lot cheaper these days. It's been years since they came out, but it's one of those technologies that we still think is new, but actually it's been long enough. Games are huge, yeah. It does need to be big. I think they're doing like a... Making games used to be about these constant trade-offs between me... the artistic vision... Fuck this guy. But he's basically saying what I was saying earlier, um, the art is, like, behind because we don't have the power to do it. Uh, so yeah, they're modeling, like, a 825 gig model, which to me says a 1 terabyte model. 
but with hardware loss, which is acceptable. He isn't real. No, I think he is. I think Yamauchi is the the main one who isn't real. I think Yamauchi's definitely CG, and I think I was saying it earlier, Fem. I don't know if you were here. I think they've done it on purpose to kind of show off their their CG prowess. But that guy is definitely post-processed. Okay, everyone get ready for a spit take. I got my water ready. <laughs> uh, this is a loop day game. It seems cool. Um, conceptually. I'm just going to let this run while I mention. So that game designer I was talking about was talking about Shadow of the Colossus, and he also said he didn't like the remake, but it was more because... So the main art problem was that the artist had covered up a lot of the horizontal lines that show where you can climb and stuff. That's just a mistake, you know. That's kind of game design 101, and that should have been addressed. But the other stuff that he didn't like about it was basically because it's such an old game, it really hasn't aged that well. When you try and play it, it's clunky and, you know, it's frustrating at times and they didn't address any of that stuff. For me, I'm, I, I prefer that they keep that stuff the same usually, but then another part of me says, if you're going to do a remake, why not address quality of life, things like that, so... I'm in two minds. I like the game. Don't go west. I like the game because I... I like how clunky it is, in a way that, like when I played original Shadow of the Colossus, that clunkiness felt like real climbing, in a way. It was like, it added to the experience. I could see how it might not have aged well, especially if you've not played the game before. But the general argument goes, if you've played it and you love it, uh, and you haven't played it in like 10 years, just enjoy remembering it for how it was. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, as a, as a fucking Returnal. Who calls the game Returnal? Uh, it, would, it would be nice to have quality of life changes and stuff like that sometimes. But to say that Bluepoint do a bad job is incorrect. They didn't do a bad job, they did an accurate job with some nice visual updates. Uh, that some people liked and some people didn't like. And I think they're going to do an amazing job with Demon Souls. Revengeance. So yeah, there's this argument like, what's dumber, Revengeance or Returnal? Returnal's trailer was deadpan serious and then the name came up and I fucking pissed myself. At least Revengeance was never trying to be anything but stupid. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, the the speed of uh, of Demon Souls is like it's beyond any other Souls game. You go back to it and it's like the future. You liked the name, see, fam. It was like I laughed at it because I thought it was like edgy, it, like some kid on Deviant Art had come up with it or Live Journal, you know, Returnal. <laughs> it just cracked me up. But the game looks pretty cool, and I was saying earlier, it's it's cool that they showed a bunch of stuff, and then they actually showed some combat, so it's not just a walking sim. Um, so yeah, neat. I like the idea. Individual and... <laughs> Umstivist. Umstiven. I haven't commented on this yet. Uh, Sumo, apparently, are making Little Big Planet games now. Well, Little Big Planet Sackboy games. Um, when I saw this trailer, uh, what I think is, if this had Mario characters in it, I think this would be a perfectly serviceable Mario platformer game. So, to put it another way, it looks like a completely, completely reasonable platformer. The only, the only, the only thing different about it from something I would expect from a, a game like that is it's not Mario. So, I guess we'll see how that goes. Got a pinwheel for you, brah. 
Yeah, I want a sickle moon flag. I don't remember this. Okay, what do I say about... Uh, what is this game called again? It was like Destruction All-Stars. Yeah, the colors are muted. That's the thing. That's what I mean, actually, Fem. You've nailed it there. When, I, when I'm like... When you think about Mario, Mario is like super really, really colorful. But the Sackboy stuff is all very gray. And that's generally the difference between PlayStation's mascots and Nintendo's mascots. Uh, so yeah, Fem, I... I was watching the beginning of this and thinking, this is kind of dumb. I thought, you know what, where's the sound? Uh, but then I was like, hang on, this is like Rocket League Destruction Derby. This actually looks pretty fucking sick. <laughs> like, I really enjoyed Rocket League for a while. Um, and I think certainly is something that I'd want to play with some friends once or twice. This is, uh, this is one of those things that I'd really enjoy. Again, it's not a thing that I'm going to like go out and rush to buy day one and get really into. Is that me in the kitty helmet? I don't know, I think I'm the guy with the box hat on. <laughs> but, like, the fact that you have, like, Carmageddon, Rocket League, and then there's, like, you get fucked out of your car and you have to run around, I guess, which is, like, a last chance thing. I love that mechanic in games. I actually think this is going to probably be the next Rocket League. I think this is going to be a big hitter. A new Twisted Metal or Rogue Trip. Yeah, when was the last time they did Hello, Twisted Metal? My name is Josh Greer, and this is my brother Mike. We're from Ember Lab, a small team... Oh, the, the Mario Brothers. Um, okay, this is... Share with, you the first look at uh, with the exception of Demon Souls, the thing I'm most interested in. So I'm gonna let him play this. And redemption. So please enjoy. I'm just gonna ruin it with Link. I need another pinwheel. You can tell that they have a background in like film and animation just from the way they've designed their characters and shaded them. What does he say? Doesn't tell me. I think he already gave me this flower. So this looks like a kind of Zelda-like um, action-adventure thing, which I'm into. I love the aesthetic. I really like just the whole feeling of it. This is a really cool trailer. I look forward to seeing what what, what else comes out for this. Or shouting Pikmin. The other like Super Atari footballs from 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 uh, Spirit Away, mixed with Kodama from. Is this one okay? Yeah, I am a hundred percent on board with this one. I, I will be watching it with bated breath. Um. Demon Souls, make it smooth and great, make it shiny. Give me shiny armor and, and rocks that stick out from walls. You ever feel like you're just waiting for a sign? Too many plants. <laughs> okay, so do that thing you've always meant to do. Goodbye, Volcano High. Not my audience. I but definitely an audience for it. But not my demographic. 
definitely an audience for it. I think this is going to resonate really well with the Something Life is Strange, me. Undertale, you know, Delta Rune, young teen, coming, coming of age demographic. I'll never be as good as what I imagined. I'm still just staying on the edge. But if we've got nothing else to lose... What I love about this is when the logo pops up, there's like a meteor in it. I'm like, are they finishing high school or is the meteor going to kill all the dinosaurs? Like... I did really like the song though, it's good. of an era. <laughs> I'm sorry if that was ruined for you, but uh, I'm sure that'll be good for those that love it. Hi, I'm Lauren Lanning, and I'm ah, going to show yes. you a game that I've been dying to make. It's an emotionally engaging story where rescuing is rewarding, failure is devastatingly hilarious, and the memories should last you a lifetime. Take a look. A new Abe game. Uh, I really, really dig the Abe's games. I never really played the other ones from Oddworld, but I'm like totally on board with this. He's a guy that really likes what he does, you can tell. <laughs> uh, so I need the last item, which I guess is a statue. It looks like he's really lent right into the idea of having more of the, um... What are they called? These fucking people, I forget. The, the mo... Oh, fucking... Muk, muk, I can't remember. It's... It's been so long. Mudokuns, that's it. Thank you, Shooting Star Neku. Mudokuns. Mudokun... Mudurka Mujikuns. Mudurka. Rabu. Oh. For any music, yeah, it's really good atmosphere in the Old World games. Uh, so I look forward to that again. Um, okay, here we go. <laughs> so this is this is Ghostwire Tokyo, which they teased a few years back, uh, or last year, I guess, with that that lady, you know, that lady. It's spooky. Um, we didn't know anything about the game, and now we're seeing some stuff with the game. I'm getting kind of a Shadow Warrior vibe. Ikumi Nakamura, that was her, yeah. So, this is the first trailer that made me go, What the fuck? Because <laughs> I was just thoroughly not expecting it to be like this. What the fuck? So. others don't. Cool aesthetic. I like the vibe of it. I'm hoping that it's kind of an open world thing. Dishonored with Yokai. Yeah, it's got a dishonored vibe, yeah. That's It's up to you to save Tokyo. Like you do like Naruto ninja hand signals. <laughs> I wasn't expecting it to be FPS at all. But 
but if this is like an open world thing, because they were talking about how realizing Tokyo and all that, you know, I expect it's probably going to be quite linear. But if this is an open world thing, I'm 100% on board because that would be cool as hell. Um, still, I am a little interested in this. In the same way that I was interested in Shadow Warrior. Big fan of Yokai. But yeah, it's 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 got a Bethesda logo down there, so that means it's going to be broken as fuck when it launches. Uh, Dash thinks it looks like they changed the entire art aesthetic. Yeah, we we didn't really have we had we had what was effectively a piece of concept art. The tone is a little different, I think, because you said there was no tone, but. Tone is in the concept art too. I think I think the tone is more a little bit more colourful and eccentric than maybe we were led to believe before. But you know, tones can shift like that as I am learning <laughs> this week. It, it would be a good VR game. I wonder if that's why they're doing it like that. But yeah, it would be worth going back to see that first trailer again. I, I like the kind of 2001 interstellar music they did for this. I don't know what the game is though. Um, it's kind of a little bit esoteric. And also, I had to look up what it was called on the internet, because when I saw Year Zero, I was thinking it might be called Zero or something, and then I couldn't un unsee that when the logo popped up, and I was like, what the fuck does this logo say? I'll take 85 rupees. Man, you're just making shit up. Jet. Jet to the far shore. I couldn't read that <laughs> when it first popped up, but I was just well confused. But this is, um, this is what, Super Brothers? They did some other games. Uh, that one other game that, that did really well. Sword and Sorcery, was it? But this is this is one of those Sony putting in lots of indie trailers. Okay, I'm gonna get rid of this because I hate it. Right, I'm not playing that shit. I'm gonna give you a lesson right here, everyone. <laughs> I'm gonna preach for a minute. When you're doing a, a game about like playing as like a god killer character with these big swords and you're going around smashing things in, pick some appropriate music. I don't want to hear, like, some fucking annoying modern hip-hop crap about riding in limousines. You know, it's not <laughs> it's not appropriate. Rap step, I guess. Uh, so, as far as I can tell from this trailer, the game is about hitting stuff. Um, is it some kind of arena fighter? I think remains to see what it'll be like, but it really fucked me off because it was the most inappropriate music they could have chosen. And uh, I just thought it. I, I made a note of it. I made a note saying, where is it? Worst choice of music award goes to Godfall, and the worst trailer award goes to Godfall. <laughs> I didn't mean to go west there, I meant to go east. God damn it. <laughs> so, you know. Ah, Annapurna again, but also Heart Machine. Polar Opposite.
Art Machine made a game called Hyperlight Drifter. If you haven't played it, play it. It's fucking great. Uh, it's got a really good aesthetic, wonderful soundtrack by uh, Disasterpiece, aka Rich Freeland, who it sounds like is also doing this game. Yeah, I know nothing about that god god game after seeing that trailer, other than that I was annoyed at the trailer. I kinda wish this music wasn't blaring so you could hear this. Just do a little reverse because you have to hear this. It sounds. It sounds really pretty. Um, so, this is called Solar Ash. I don't remember what it was called when they last showed this a couple of years ago. Was it like Deep Star Galactic or something like that? You might remember, Fem. I'm thinking of Deep Rock Galactic, aren't I? Solar Ash Kingdom. Nothing... Yeah, it, it was Solar Ash Kingdom before, but now it's just called Solar Ash. So I was, like, way off. Anyway, um... Was always gonna end like this. This voice actor is really interesting. <laughs> all your hard work, all your sacrifice, it is the face set up the process. Jesper Kid's soundtrack to Hitman Blood Money, but I haven't really played a Hitman game since Hitman 2, though there's definitely an audience for it. Uh, there's no gameplay, though. Death awaits. It's very much aimed at people that want to see the story unfold. But then it's a Hitman game, so I guess you kind of know what the gameplay is going to be, right? By this point. Looking at my notes. Um, so he kind of automatically gets the flag thing. Just, I keep coming back to make sure. What is this? This is... Oh, this is... Is this still Hitman? I guess they did kind of show some gameplay areas. I must have blinked and missed this part. I quite like the way they designed that logo. It's, uh... Simple. <laughs> right. Yes, he's got the flag. And uh, now we should go to the other salesman again and see if he wants it. I honestly don't remember any of these flags, you know. 
Has it been that long since I played this? Oh, uh, this is the Astro's Playroom, Playroom thing. Um, that was a part of the PS4's experience. I think it was free. Uh, this looks like they just made Mario Sunshine or something. Or it's definitely got Mario. Vibes. Everyone's free. The Astro stuff was continued in the VR stuff. It's considered one of the best VR experiences on the PS. I've seen people do some really fun shit with it. If that's free, if that's a part of, um, hang on a minute, if that's a part of when you get a PS5, then you know, cool. I mean, it looks like the kind of game you could happily pay for as well. But uh, there you are. Little Devil Inside, still don't really know what it is, but I dig the aesthetic. Um, it's showing us a lot of... Is that Bomb Island? Where is it? It's certainly showing us a lot of set pieces and linear looking sequences. I'm wondering if it's actually going to be more of a side-scroller, like a 2.5D game. Yeah, Fem, this is, this is up there, and this is one of the most intriguing games I've seen. I think they showed some of this a while back as well at E3, or maybe before. Schmeet. <laughs> uh huh. There's a there's a poop joke. I was trying to get the audio up for it. <laughs> it's like. Poop. I dig that, that's a cool design. That's actually something I forgot to comment on on um on Returnal. The enemy design in Returnal looks really cool. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what this is, but I, I like the I like the tone of it. it It has a very unique look. What's up, everyone? I'm Zion Wish of the New Orleans. Oh, here's EA Sports Here with their latest and realistic sweat technology. Y'all are not ready for this. And shiny floors. It's cool, but I'm gonna drop it so that we can just <laughs> just just wait for this close-up of his face. It's like every time they show an NBA trailer, it's like how much more sweat can we get on the character? Sweat. Look how shiny he is. I do like that shot though. When he lands on the ground, the impact of it is really well done. Uh, just from a kind of a direct, vi oh, like a visual direction perspective, it's it's good. Um. <laughs> I don't get the effect, the appeal of shit you can do IRL games. I can't do that IRL, so <laughs> I would happily play a sports game. But yeah, I'm not like really into them. Okay, I have to turn the music on because I'm a massive KKB fan and when I first saw this I thought it just kind of looked a little janky uh, but then I saw the Octodad uh, logo come up and I was like, okay, this is probably going to be fucking hilarious, whatever it is. Amazing, 
a very recently discovered species entirely unique to this island. That's what I wanted. Oh, this one's lively. Found an idol. It's a seal. <laughs> or some walrus or something. Oh, it's you! Tasty too. Welcome Fucking to love KKB. Turn it up. Snake. I can't go any louder. Is open. He mentioned Great Come Fish Island. Me on the island of <sighs> Liz! Liz, I, um, I was trying to carry a lamp with my weenie hands, but I dropped it. And, uh, now the town's on fire. <laughs> weenie hands. Would you rather have dick fingers? Like, what, what the fuck was that argument? Kind of looks like you can play as both the bugs and whatever the fuck people thinks. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what it is, but color me intrigued, because it's coming out this year. It's got KKB involved, and uh, it's the Octodad people, so good shit. Let's go get that tower while we're here. I think I've got bait now. coming up. Hi everyone, thank you for being with us today for this very special event. But before we get to the end of the show, I have something very near and dear to me. Again, I really didn't think they were going to show this. I thought if anything, I knew this was a FromSoft thing. I thought it was Elden Ring just from the, um, the shots of the landscape. until the music kicked in and Mr. Dangles showed up. Look at that fucking landscape though. That is World Machine doing its best work. Didn't mean to do that. <laughs> keep saying it. Anyone who's in the Discord chat knows I keep saying it. I love this new retake on the soundtrack. I just really hope they give me the original one as well, because it's fucking funny. Tower Knight looks amazing. These guys look way better. Dragon King is a really, really good retake on it. Fish, come here. So yeah, obviously I'm excited about that, whenever that happens. If that's the launch title for PS5, then I'm buying it day one. Desu is a next-gen first-person shooter Desu? about uh, an loop. assassin's Desu loop. This is our unique vision of what our king is all about. I shouldn't make fun. I have to work with a lot of French people, and I never know what they're saying. I, I try. Want to see some stylish action? Check this out. Um. <laughs> Here's the second of your Loop Day games from the presentation. Uh, this one actually looks really cool. I like the style of it. Again, we talk about tone. The tone's really good, cool. It reminds me of like. It reminds me of 70s movies. Uh, she is nice. 
not making this easy. Like this guy is like he reminds me of that dude who was in um Enter the Dragon who's like, yo Mr. Ham man, you come straight out of a comic book. Uh, but this, uh, from, what, from what I can tell, this is 3D Katana Zero slash um, Dishonored. We'll go to Great Fish Isle next. It's two towers to the west. 777 rupees. Sorry, I can't balance the audio better. It's really hard to do. <laughs> but we're nearly at the end of the uh, PS5 stuff anyway. So. Did I do that one? I feel like I did that submarine. I never tell though, there's like no indication as to whether I've done it or not about going in. It wasn't an FPS in your head. Uh, yeah, they showed this in the past, didn't they? I wonder if this will be Black Reef's protect multiplayer. Pain in my ass. She may kill me a million times, but eventually, inevitably, I will break this fucking loop. Yeah, I've done this one. This would be a really interesting online game if you had one character on each side. But, uh,. Yeah, I'm down. If anything, because it's just, you know, it looks like it's doing Dishonored mechanics, but also Katana Zero, and that was a cool game. One that I've yet to play on stream. I don't like watching you. Cool 70s live. And from that shot, it looks like you, you can play as the lady on the other side of that story. So yeah, I wonder if it is the online deal. Please. Do not want. Ah, okay, so... Be honest with me, chat. How long did it take for you to figure out that this was Resident Evil? I'm going to say the exact moment when I knew. It was about this point. And it's because of the, those mushrooms in the, in the thing tipped over. It was very, very similar environmentally and just like... The color scheme, the the shaders, all that stuff, very similar to the early demo of Resident Evil 7. And then I was like, this is Resident Evil. Please look forward to it. It was weird, like, there's so many people and characters in it that I was like, is this Resi? But I was pretty convinced it was Resi from the way it looks. I think at this point I was doubting it. It looks really intriguing. It's like it, like they've taken the whole vibe of Seven and then sort of smushed in a bunch of Resi 2 Remake vibe into it and it's uh, pretty cool. It actually looks a, li a little bit like a Silent Hill game and not in a bad way. Like, 
let me rephrase that. I was going to say it looks a bit like Silent Hill Homecoming, but not in a bad way. Um... There he is. Still got to play seven. Haven't played seven. It's like it's like I just couldn't handle anymore after six. And I know it's a very different game. I will get around to it. It does look like Bloodborne, doesn't it? Also, this uh, probably the best logo. I love that. Also, fucking Fiku Chris. Why? Why? Brenda. Don't <laughs> bring that shit over here. That stays in Maelstrom's channel. No, I don't want an exotic flower. Who do you think I am? Some kind of sham. Yeah, Chris has a chin again. Well, he's really buff after punching all those rocks now as well. He's massive. He looks like Val Kilmer in um, Traveler. <laughs> Who else? Like, uh, I don't know. I was, I was not the only one watching this. Going, is this Death Stranding? Nah, this isn't pretty enough to be. Or rather, is this is this Kojima? This isn't pretty enough to be Ludens. Yeah, I want a Skull Tower Idol. The colours of it is grey! <laughs> Fuck you. Take your rupees. Um, I love this conceptually. Again, we don't know what the gameplay is, but I'm, I'm all about this. It looks like an AI kid and some kind of robot hologram cat, and this is like a spaceman. Oh, Spirits Within, you mean? Yeah, that's a neat comparison. I actually really liked the Spirits Within. <laughs> I know it bombed at the box office, but I thought it was a good film. I think this is Capcom as well, if I'm not mistaken. Laura's competition, Aki Ross. It was the name of the virtual actress. Yeah, that. This is Ghost in the Shell shit. This fucking. This is cool. Big that. It's like well thought out physical constraint, high concept sci fi. There seems to have been a resurgence in recent years of. Um, of sci fi that's. like. Super futuristic, but it has all the aesthetics of our kind of modern day ISS NASA looking stuff, which really grounds it quite well. Um, I'd be interesting to see what this is, but again, it's 2022, so it could be anything. <laughs> and I think that was basically all the trailers. So the next thing is the, uh, the console reveal, which I'm sure we've all seen by now. <laughs> the pyramid. Ah, oh, no, this is... this is... okay, yeah. I did not play... Um, Horizon Zero Dawn. I always meant to, but I, th I can't remember what happened. It came out when I was playing either Persona or Iceborne or some other big, massive, long game. So I really didn't want to get into it. Um... But I have a week off after next week, and you can buy Horizon Zero Dawn Complete Edition on PS4 for 12 quid. So I was thinking I might actually pick it up if I can. People thinking Pragmata might be the Dead Space Writer game. Hmm. It's, it seems like a completely different vibe, but yeah, sure. 
With the pandemic and all gaming conventions being cancelled, there might not even be a chance to see the console in person before it's released. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, hello, Evan. We. What I like about this trailer is the, the variety of environments they showed. And of course it's basically all pre-rendered, but from an art direction perspective it's it's pretty cool. Also, uh, the red weed, hello. HG Wells, War of the Worlds. There's nothing I wouldn't do to save this world. No depth I won't explore. So do I fill my town with skull statues? Oh, they move! That's neat. I didn't realize... I don't remember this quest. Did I just never do it? No secret. I won't unlock. It looks like I can get another stand, too. I'm gonna need to buy another statue. No barrier. I won't cross. Alright, let's, uh... This mission is mine alone. Falter. Look at all these plants, what a hack. <laughs> what a bimbo! To stop what's coming. Original plans for PS5 would be at basically every gaming event worldwide so people could experience it. Yeah. Yeah, that is uh, interesting, isn't it? logos pop up and I remember there's been this thing on Twitter recently on about <laughs> pay rates in the games industry and all of those companies, Insomniac, Gorilla, all, this, all these American companies, they get paid like five times what you get paid in the UK to make games. It's ridiculous. Although the cost of living is higher. So. Is that. We're getting another ally outfit in Monha? Maybe. Stay tuned for much more. Can't wait for you to get your hands on it. Look, developers who have all been given good cameras and cleaned up of like the Microsoft XX, who had like piece of shit, hyper registered hypercam to. And here's your extremely elongated reveal <laughs> of the console. But again, it's another cool particle systems demonstration. Oh. Ooh. Right, did you sell me the skull statue? This one? No, was that the other guy? Big sale flag, sure, why not? I'm glad I had a chance to do all this trading while the uh, this video was going, because it's not particularly interesting to watch. No 
I will swing by the other one again. Okay, so that thing is the size of a PC tower. That makes it taller than the PS3. Investing in one at some point because you know it's it's just like the dumbest decision ever, but it always comes down to Star Ocean for me. I'm like, eventually another Star Ocean game is going to come out, and it ain't going to come out on an Xbox. You like it? It's a fugly monster. Yeah, it's very divisive, isn't it? I don't love it. I think it's kind of ugly. I appreciate what they're going for. I think when you lie it down on its side, it's less bad. But when I was, like, that's like a early 2000s Netgear router, is what I see when I see that. BT Home Hub. It's very bold. Why you curve? I don't know. Pulse 3D headset. That's interesting. Uh, because of the HRTF stuff that they're doing with sound, I wonder if that's going to fully support that. Although you don't actually need a headset to support that, that's kind of the point of it. We hope you've enjoyed the first glimpse of our future today. You've seen when you see the two together along with the disc drive, it looks like it has cancer. Harsh. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it's got like a tumour. It's wearing jodhpurs. At PlayStation, we believe in generational transitions, and we put years of work into making them happen. We want you to enjoy the unique benefits of moving from one generation to the next. Like I said, I think if you lie it down, it will be less fugly, and obviously we'll get used to it, but yeah, I don't know. It's what's in the design, right? What I do like about the design is it looks like they've put big, like, that fluted collar looking thing at the top, that's got some pretty hefty looking heat vents. Like, all the way around it, it's got heat ventilation. That's a good thing. <laughs> Just from a design perspective. If you lay it down, you lose all your desk space, that's true. Um, if you have it in a unit with nothing else in it, you could lay it down. I'm gonna do what I do with all my consoles and stand it up in somewhere you can't see it anyway. I will be ready. It looks like it'll be quiet. I don't think it's gonna be quiet. I think it's gonna sound like a jet engine taking off again. But what <laughs> remains to be seen. We haven't done the cabana puzzle and I am here. Fuck, let's do it. Hey, no. Really want that game. You are going the Xbox way, fam. Yeah, again, it's like... For me, I don't see a point in buying an Xbox because I can't think of any games that are on the Xbox that aren't on PC. With the exception of the Halo collection, which is coming out slowly. And certainly if you can mention any games that aren't out on PC that are on the Xbox, uh, I'll probably not be interested in them, personally. So, I tend to stick with Sony just because I play a lot of these weird kind of Japanese games that just never come out on the Xbox. Ooh. Console shelves, good idea. Twee weeb shit, yeah. If you're if you're uh, Rob, because he likes the word twee. I'm not sure. He... I wish he needs more words. Twee. What does twee like? What is the definition? I gotta look it up. It's a very strange word, isn't it? Anyway. um... That then is the GameStop stream, so it'll go on for like four hours of people talking, so I'm going to turn it off. 
So thanks for putting up with my ranting over that. I uh, just wanted to give my thoughts and opinions on some of the stuff I saw and let you all know what I'm interested in. And of course, they are all thoughts and opinions. Some of them are educated guesses, as I am a AAA industry developer, some of you know. Um, but yeah, to, to recap, Stray, I'll be playing. Um, Kena, 100%, yes. Soulstorm, I will play. Uh, the Abe game. Ghostwire, I'm interested in. Uh, probably wait for it to come into work or go on a discount. I don't know. Remains to be seen. We still don't know that much about it. Uh, I would love to know what what Jet, the Far Shore, is, because I have no idea. Uh, Destruction All-Stars is... I would love to play that, especially with some other people. I think it looks like a lot of fun, and it's going to be the next Rocket League thing. Um, Godfall is a prime example of how not to make a trailer. Solar Ash, uh, again, 100% on board. Love Heart Machine and their whole thing. I have I have Hyperlight Drifter hoodies and pin badges and the art book. Keep all that stuff. Uh, Little Devil Inside, very, very interesting. Would love to see more of it. Bug Snacks, just because it's the Octodad people in KKB. Yes, more of that, please. Show me what it is. Uh, Demon Souls is, if that comes out as a launch title, that's a day one purchase for me. And uh, Returnal made me laugh. Uh, mildly interested in it. Deathloop, again, sort of interested, but not like high on my list. And of course, Resident Evil 8 is Resident Evil 8. Uh, Pragmata, would love to see more of. It is probably going to be like two more years before we see any gameplay, though. And that's it. And of course, Project Athia, which again could be fucking anything, and that's my re full coverage review of the PS5 trailer. Um, I believe there's a PC gaming one tonight as well, so I'm going to watch that later. Uh, you just notice we don't see the back of it, so I wonder what extra ports and also where the N2 SSD goes. Yeah, there was. Is, was that confirmed, or was it just like a a kind of patent document thing, but weren't they doing, like, replaceable cartridge-like SSDs? So yeah, I wonder if they slot in the back, and... Uh, I, I imagine it's probably gonna have a couple... it might have a... a couple of ports. I'm expecting optical audio, maybe. Um, Digital display ports over HDMI. Or both. Who knows? I mentioned it during Sony's talk in March. Yeah, I don't know. I, I've been kind of so busy with work that I've been. Uh, ironically, I've been so busy making AAA games that I've been completely out of the loop of what's going on in the games world. <laughs> I don't really get console fanboys, fam. I don't understand it. Like, I'm not going to turn around... Like, I will always buy Sony consoles because they have the games I want. I'm not going to turn around and say you shouldn't buy an Xbox because ABC. Except in the case of the original Xbox One, which is a piece of shit, and I only say that because I had to develop for it and it ruined all my work. Uh, <laughs> this cabana belongs to the master, and the master alone, you grimy trespassing little scoundrel. Away with you! Away, I say! Uh, the leap painting was for a kid's tie. Okay. Uh. That's... that's the... are you the new master? Are you Master Tom? I am. Should I call myself Bates for one fucking joke in this entire game? <sighs> Should be able to upgrade it with a retail SD. Oh, like standard upgrade, yeah. Usually you have to take that shit apart and void your warranty to do that, but I I wanna say that they're probably gonna let us not like have official SSDs you can just plug in because games are massive these days. Microsoft going proprietary, of course they are. They've done that since the Xbox 360. <laughs> just started with I don't like PS4 really, and I'm like, cool, this is about PS5. They just go cats PlayStation sucks, but with many more use. <laughs> But it didn't specify why. <laughs> uh, 
It sucks because I don't get to play Gears of War. Ooh. Um, so we are now... Why? I never... Is there supposed to be something going in this frame? I can never remember. It always struck me as odd that it was empty. So we have a house now. Uh, there's a cardboard butler for some reason. A wooden butler. Um, we have to do a slide puzzle. I fucking hate slide puzzles and I hate this stupid corona child so we're gonna have to stare at him for like half an hour while I try and figure this out because I'm not smart enough to use the algorithm method to do it. Why? How do I talk to you? Why are there so many of you? <sighs> Fuck. Do you have an interest in the amusements of nobility? No, I don't. But I have to do it. <laughs> Squeak. Uh, yeah, that's true. The PlayStation Showcase was really well done, considered, and put together. They spent a lot of time on it. Microsoft One, I get what they're going for. Um, we're humans too, but listen. <laughs> the majority of people that go out and buy games don't think that, that developers exist as human beings and they don't give a shit. They just care about your game. So it would have been better to go with a more professional angle, I think. Uh, and at least get your executives decent webcams. There was like one guy in the whole thing who was like from a third party developer and he had the best audio visual setup and then they put him next to like an exec from Microsoft who had like this crusty unregistered hypercam and shitty audio and I'm just like, what are you doing? The only thing I remember from that is when they showed that Forza game. No, not Forza, sorry. They showed this <laughs> they showed this Codemasters racing game. Uh I used to work there as well. And uh I remember seeing a bunch of cars and going, is this Forza? Ah, it's not pretty enough. It's Codemasters. And then the Codemasters logo popped up. <laughs> I was like, oof, I feel a bit bad now. <laughs> it, it was a ray of game and not all meaty shooty do bro 18 plus stuff. You're right. It, it was a very large number of games. Uh, lots and lots of different indies, different styles. They're actually... I want to say Returnal was like a third-person shooter looking thing and it had Deathloop which was also a shooty shooty gun game but the majority of it was kind of platformy stuff I want to say like there's a lot of I'm just looking at my list here and yeah there's there's a lot of not combat centric stuff but I guess equal parts just try, yeah, because you got Soulstorm, which is like a platform adventure. Kana, same, but it has combat. Uh, Ghostwire is very shooty shooty. Godfall is all about punching stuff. Solar Rush is exploration. Little Devil Inside exploration. Bug Snacks, no idea. Yeah, I don't know. Good variety. Anyway, I've got to focus on this because I hate this. The rules escape me. You want to know why they get paid so much more in the USA? If you get sick, then one visit you'll be paying like a thousand dollars. It's true, but you also, uh, like, those companies also provide medical insurance. The the, the real downside is the crunch culture um, is much, much worse over there. And, you know, if you want to get paid the big bucks, you have to work for a piece of shit like Riot. Also, a thousand is like a small amount. It's, that's just for like. I'd heard of people that had had like pregnancy uh, complications, and the bill they come out with is like a million dollars. Like, how the fuck are you supposed to pay for that? Horrific. Uh, I wonder if there was originally more. Wait. Thank god there's not a limit on the number of turns that I get. More shooter games and they remove them because of the BLM protest just to send the industry. I feel like there was a reaction, reactionary change in the content of the presentation because of the BLM stuff. 
I said it earlier, with opening with the um, Miles Morales trailer, I think that was a change that they made. Oh god. Alright, that goes at the top. This goes at the top. This goes at the bottom. And there's nothing on the bottom left. Okay, so... I fully expect Soulstorm to take the piss in certain areas where the gameplay is concerned, and that's why I want it more. <laughs> I, I really like... Uh, there's like shots of you leading a bunch of Madokans and jumping across gaps, and they're all getting fucking annihilated, and it's like... Yeah, that, that reminds me of Abe's Odyssey... Uh, Abe's Exodus, but like on a bigger scale. I like that. Wait, no, that does go in the bottom left. Idiot. Yeah. Uh, see, mm. how do I get this to go there? Like that. Okay, good. Uh, but this needs to go up left. Suicide. Fucking hate this so much. Hi, Maelstrom. Uh, welcome. Yeah, good, good diversity in main characters. Very, very cool. I'm occasionally looking over at chat and slightly concentrating on this puzzle that I, I want to put in the fire I can hear in my left ear that's tantalizing us. How are you doing, Maelstrom? We just did a run through of the PS5 video while I did some boring trading shit in Zelda. Some pretty exciting stuff, I'm sure you'll agree. And so, some pretty nonplus stuff. <laughs> but more or less, I thought it was a much better presentation than the uh, next stuff. Oh, I've wrecked it. I've wrecked it. Right, what do I need? I need this to go down. And I need that to go up. And then I need these to swap places somehow. That's in the wrong place. Oh, we're so close! Thank you. 
<laughs> Damn it. <laughs> uh, slide puzzles of the devil, yes they are. Um, yeah, PC Gaming Show, uh, I didn't know it was happening until you mentioned it, I'm gonna watch that later. Um, maybe we'll actually see some Baldur's Gate footage, how about that? Um, yeah, I, I would like to... I'd like to... Whoever invented slide puzzles... Look, I know it was a different time. But I need you to undo it. You know, I don't think we can. I don't think we can undo it. I think it's one of those things that will al always exist, whether we like it or not. <laughs> right, I'm fucking looking this up. Let's slide all their hands around their body and see how they like it. Imagine, it's pull their legs in different places. Yeah, I'm looking up right now if I get anything other than rupees for doing this, because I'm not fucking doing it. We're gonna finish the game without doing this, because otherwise we'll, this is like three streams of just fucking slide puzzles. The minigame looks like a real life sliding puzzle. A picture is cut into a 4x4 grid jumbled. The objective is to slide the pieces around to recreate the original image. The missing piece will always be in the top right hand corner. After completing an image, 50 rupees will fall on the floor and one of the 16 bulbs will light up, indicating a number of levels completed. Link must leave and re-enter the house after completing a puzzle to play the next one. Completing it, all 16 puzzles grants a 200 rupee reward, giving a grand total of 950 rupees to be won from the game. Uh, there is no mention of anything other than rupees, so I am not doing this fucking puzzle. But for your benefit, I will show you these are the pictures that can be done. At the bottom here. These are all the pictures. So enjoy that. Uh, this is the last time you'll see them. I'm actually going to look up the cabana... Uh, the private oasis stuff, because I know there's a couple more things to do here, but I'm not sure what they are. Um, I know that there's a there's the thing outside. I, th I used to think I could get in the fire, but I think maybe that's not true. What is that all about? Why is there an empty window frame? Why are you in a maid's... You know what? You do you. I'm out. Fuck this shit, I'm out. I think we're going to need some help to get up there from our friend. Kermit. I kind of feel bad for a pastry for was it or a Lynchy? Was it Lynchy that suggested the book? Because we haven't actually had a chance to use it. There you are. 
You can at least see it. And I'll, for you, I'll do, I'll get that treasure and then I'll, uh, we'll do a fly, a big fly. Ba -na -na -na. Worth it. I will worth it, mate. Kill Jester. <laughs> oh hi everybody! My name's Kermit the Frog. I'm a, I'm a real frog, and I like to hook things. It's like I he's going to Kermit suicide. He's doing like a ventriloquist act. He's hiding his face with his shield, though, so you can't tell it's him talking. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna leave. I'm gonna go over there. I had nothing for that bit. Yep. Yep. Let's go talk to our um, shop guy. Actually, no, let's not. Let's not. Let's go to Great Fish Isle. Tell Kermit about the big head bag you have in your inventory. Uh, you know that girlfriend of yours, Kermit? <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing Kermit, so I thought it's not how it works. Uh, you know what I was disappointed in, actually? The most disappointing thing about the whole PS5 reveal uh, trail, uh, event was they didn't show Kermit or Miku in the Resident Evil 8 trailer, and I'm a little bit concerned that they might have uh, retconned Resi 5. I hope they don't cut them out, because like I know in six, like everything was ballsed up and they had to basically cancel Resident Evil and start it up again with seven, but like you know, if they're gonna bring back iconic characters like Chris, then I expect to see people like Jill, maybe Rebecca Chambers, uh you know, Kermit and Miku should be in that game. They retcon Resi 5's Chris face into it. Thick Chris. He's massive. Xbox, check it out. I'm fucking massive, mate. Who's Chris in RE5? Yeah, that's a good, good question. I think he's, um... You know that big, like, leech monster thing? I think that's Chris. Because he, he shows up a couple of times, doesn't he? And then you have to set him on fire, burninate him. And the fat roof cottagers! You wanna buy a sail flag? Yeah, I want that. Why is everyone selling flags? This flag has a rather courageous feel to it. I guess we'll go to... Mother and Child again? I must have never done this. You know, I'm gonna look it up as well, just to make sure I'm not, like, wasting a bunch of time. Wind Waker side quests. Uh, 
I am missing two more items. So what do we got? Townflower, sea flower, exotic flower, pinwheel, sickle moon flag, big cat flag, fountain island idol, skull tower idol, big sail flag, hero's flag, and we're missing the postman statue and the shop brewery statue. And then we get a piece of heart. <laughs> uh, so I need to give... To this guy, a fountain idol. No, oh, I already have that. I guess it doesn't matter. Oh, what they will offer Link for each decoration. So if I if I offer No, he's supposed to offer me the the postman statue, but I guess I have to go to a different place. I'll try the I'll try the bomb island. No, I'll try mother and child again with Pyrrhus. Like I don't think that list is accurate. I think it doesn't matter as long as you give them something they haven't seen before. Fuck it. lot of teleporting and trading today, hey? Excuse me. Did the snores. <laughs> Wee! Weeb. So Maelstrom, uh, I started, about the time that Rob started playing Dark Souls yesterday, I started a, uh, a new character on Dark Souls 3. Just to have one that was kind of more in your level range for next time you'll decide to play it. And uh, I, I did it as like the opposite of my current build, right? It's it's like heavy, heavy Astarmo, fucking Zweihando slow as fuck, all my points are in strength and vitality, and it's <laughs> compared to my Pyromancer, which I've just made things hard for myself on, it's like playing fucking easy mode. <laughs> I'm just walking around, staggering things to death. If I get hit, I can take like three hits before I die, <laughs> which is much better than one. It's amazing. I really didn't make stuff easy for myself as a pyro, but oh, it's a lot of fun playing as like a big chunky knight once in a while. Just poise that shit, yeah. Uh, what I want is some even better poisier, poisier armor, because every now and then, like I say, it's easy mode. I still got fucked over by that one Irithyll knight just before the woods. He killed me a couple of times. I managed to use fat roll to evade stuff, but. Um, I'm trying to wean myself off using fat roll at all for this build because I just think it's impossible to really do well with it. It takes too long to recover. Hey look, a ghost. Yeah, so what I'm doing is uh, I'm putting all of my points into vitality now in the hopes that eventually I'll be able to have middle roll and then I'll feel pretty fucking powerful. This boat. Yeah, like the proper quality build is like this probably the smartest way to play. I've kind of got a quality build except I don't have any decks so I can't use any bows. 
So I'm just kind of walking in with the Zweihander and smacking stuff. Although, actually, the Zweihander, I only just got it, and I kind of prefer the Bastard Sword just because it, you can swing it more times. The range is a bit shorter, but like for the damage difference, it's probably better DPS. Right. You. 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 Give me warm. Give me soft. Rawr. Why, that's a hero's flag. Big catch flag. I already got a big catch flag, you asshole. I'm sorry, that was rude of me. Do you want this? Uh, yeah, upgrading the right hander gets good shit. Like, um, I've got some gems saved up. I just need the appropriate coal. The best part about things like the Zweihander and the Bastard Sword though are when you swing it the Zweihander's two, like R2 uncharged will every single time stagger large enemies like those big guys with the big bleed saws 100% of the time so you can just fucking walk all over stuff like that. Vord did not like the Bastard Sword Actually, no, it wasn't the Bastard Sword I was using then, it was the uh, the Broadsword. The Broadsword, because you, I don't think you can actually get it until um, after Fort. Back to Mother and Child again. Oh, t-shirt design. Hang on a minute. Propane Sword. Propane Sword! Yeah, the profane sword's really good. Um, I kind of... I like using a, a, a weapon with, like, good damage scaling from stats. So you do, like, a heavy or a refined upgrade, and then I use uh, pine resin or get a pyromancy skill for flame. Although I did, in the first time I played Dark Souls, the first one, I really enjoyed just having a fire weapon. <laughs> so I might even do that kind of thing. This fire with a built-in flame spell, yeah, it's it's a good one. <sighs> Pastry, you spoil me. This will be next week's t-shirt, everyone. Wait. Wait. 420, praise it. Try to save my image. Come on, do the thing. Save. Jesus. Love it. <sighs> Edgy Snow Scythe, that's a good one. Scaling is very silly for a boss weapon. Christ, that is strong, that's ridiculous. <laughs> I've been thinking about the different weapons. I'm thinking I might, because I've got so much strength, I might even get Vort's mace uh, for now and see what it does, because it's got really good damage. Right, so he does have another stall on the end here. That's interesting. Yeah. Become a golfer. So, uh, while I was playing it, I was kind of rushing through, and I've ended up doing all the quests right so far, but I was, I was like, not intending to. I'm wondering if I'll just get Siegbro to the point where I can get his armor off patches and then, like, fuck that quest off and just keep his shit. <laughs> um... We're only missing two more statues. Actually, I don't think I can buy anything. Um, let's get rid of this.
Oh. Voz is pretty broken. Yeah, it's got frostbite on it as well. It's it's a really high damage blunt weapon with frostbite on it. <laughs> uh, I don't actually know how the Great Hammers play because I've never done it before. No, oh, lady, I don't care about you. Go away. <laughs> that was mean. I mean, right now. Okay, I don't really know. I'm gonna go try on the island again, see what happens. Ah! Fucking get in the boat. Now, let's see, we are coming up on... Well, it's 12 o'clock now, so... I changed my streaming schedule on a whim, um, just to try it out. The idea is that I now start from 10, I will do every Saturday and Sunday, 10 till 12, with Wiggle Room. Which means, because we've spent most of the day watching that PlayStation video and I kind of want to get a little bit more done in this game, I will go a little bit longer today. But I want to try and keep my VODs slightly shorter again. It's just weird, like, it, we got to that point where, you know, we used to be doing an hour and a half, and then suddenly it's like nearly four hours, and then I have no weekends. <laughs> Of course, tomorrow will be 10 till like 4 anyway, because we're going to be doing two things. Uh, number one will be another run of Dark Souls, which hopefully we'll finish this time. And the other thing is, it's Metro Day. Four PM is Metro Day, so I'm going to do a roll on that and see what movies we got available. Whoops, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday streams. <laughs> I couldn't do it. But it's because it's not like my the thing. I don't do this as like my number one hobby. This is just like, I want to play some games. I'll always try and give time to music more often, if I can. Music's a really weird one, like, I want to do it every day, but it just doesn't work that way. <laughs> if you're not inspired, you can't do it, so I have to do it when I can. So I like to keep my time open, even if I'm not planning on doing anything, just in case I get the itch. Yeah, yeah it's because you're doing Rob as well, isn't it? Rob's Dark Souls. I shouldn't say doing Rob, because you might summon him. <laughs> Uh, every other thing I've been doing. Ooh, you're gonna play some more. You've been playing, uh, Pace just been playing Demon Souls. Do you want this? You want this thing you just offered me? Nope. Do you want this? See, I have like a guide for this, but it's just completely unrepresentative of what's actually happening in the world, so... No! 
Oh, that's a master sword. Do you want a big sail flag? No, I don't. I don't want that shit. Get out of here. It's taken us this entire stream to do the trading quest. I was planning on doing some maps, uh, but that just did not happen. This is probably tied most bullshit heart piece in the game. With but like it, this one's way easier than doing the the trees planting trees quest thing. But they're both annoying. <laughs> What is Metro today? Do we know? I was planning on doing some work today. Oh, it's tomorrow. It's Metro. Metro is tomorrow at 4pm and we don't know what it will be, but I'm going to use my random generator to figure out which movies will go on the voting list. Yep, you skip today. Don't do that. <laughs> Donut. That's a big sail flag. You want this hero's flag? No! Yeah, I'm sure. I keep thinking it's Sunday. <laughs> you know what? This, this last week has just been such a drag. It, it's really felt like a really long time. <laughs> I can't wait for my week off, just because I feel like all I ever do is work now, because I work in the same room that I relax in. Ooh, yes, I want that. Uh, this is cool. One more statue. You know what? Uh... That, that sucks, having a massive load of work to do. But sometimes I kind of wish I had a more direct list of things to do. My stuff is very much... Uh, I kind of have to make it up as I go along. Like, there's a million things to do, but there's nobody out there to really say, this is what we've got to do. It's kind of up to me to do it. <laughs> to, to both make the work for myself and then do the work. Multiple jobs and people pulling you in different directions. They can't decide priority. Yeah, I know that feeling. Um, and it's not good. It's not fun. Like, I'm not going to say, I wish I was in your place because I don't. <laughs> but it is sometimes nice to have at least one direction to go in. My thing is effectively, it's like, make this. Okay, how do I go about making this? Well, I've got to break it down into like a zillion different tasks, and then I've got to figure out which ones of those I should be doing, and yeah, it's, it's a lot of that sort of stuff. But I'm actually quite lucky that this, this particular sprint, these next couple of weeks, it's not that pressing, because we've kind of come to the end of one of the major bits, and we're in a bit of a transitional period, so even though I kind of both have not a lot on, but also do have a lot on. It's not like I'm in crunch or anything yet, so, you know, I guess it's a comfortable place to be. But it does drag. Ah. Ah. I've played this song in my life probably 900 times, and I still fuck it up. was not the right song. It's because I get those two songs mixed up, that's why. Ah. 
Ouch. I missed my white hair already. But it's such high maintenance that I died of my roots in black. <laughs> Maybe after things start to return to normal a little bit, I'll, uh, I'll redo it. Hello, Hiatawa, if that's correct. 217, welcome. I think I've spotted you in one of my streams before. I've started doing these a bit earlier, so you're actually coming in. Hi, Tawa. Was that heat or hi? <laughs> you know, it could still be both. Yeah. I was going to say, um, we're kind of in my post stream now. I'm changing the, the times that I do stuff. But welcome in. Hello. Hi. Like saying, hey, to someone. So, hi. Hi, Tal. I'll get it right eventually. Just keep correcting me. It's fine. <laughs> I read it as heat because I do uh, Japanese language study. That's just it. <laughs> uh, would you like this weird wooden thing that I got? Would you be interested in now? My friend, I already have one. I think I should give this big statue to Great Fish Isle Guy. Wait, no, I just got it from him, didn't I? I need to give it to Mother and Child Isle Guy. Yep. It's a finished last name. Ah. Borrowed from a male singer. I see. I'm gonna go to the place. Do the thing. Wish. Oh, um, Marco. Is that his name? I haven't listened to Nightwish in fucking forever. <laughs> no shot. I did, I did it. <laughs> Kermit, end this man's life. Chark. Go, Kermit. <laughs> Kermit, kill! I am going to Kermit suicide. Uh, the level designer that I used to sit next to before the virus happened um, is a big Nightwish fan and also a big Iron Maiden fan slightly older generation than me. I think maybe that's the difference. Like, I got into Nightwish when I was younger, but at the time I was in a period of getting into lots of bands like that. Um, so I guess I chose the ones that I wanted to stick with, which would have been Stratovarius, Sonata Arctica, Rhapsody. That sort of thing, you know. Long time ago. I haven't listened to any of those in a long time. Uh, occasionally I go back to Sonata because I really like their first couple of albums. Uh, Ecliptica and Silence, I want to say. I'm going the wrong way! <laughs> Fucking hell! Piece of shit. I'm Ali Baba. Hello, I'm French and just arrived in your stream. I love your skin. How did you get it? Hello! Welcome. Uh, I made it. It's me. 
Or it was me until I dyed my hair again. But so... <laughs> vaguely threatening. What? I made this. Uh, Delay and Five Finger Death Punch at the top of your list, right? I never got into those, uh, into Five Finger Death Punch. I did... I transcribed their version of House of the Rising Sun by the Shadows, I want to say, um, for Guitar Hero Live back in the day. I say back in the day, it was like four years ago. Um, not my kind of thing, just a little bit dry for me. I did have some friends that were into it, though. I love your skin! Oh, I get it. Yeah, that is kind of threatening, isn't it? <laughs> you had a long white hair. I did. Uh, now I have a black to white fade. Um, what happened is my roots... Right, Kermit, your time is now. Uh, my roots had grown out and I have to bleach it like three times and I just couldn't be asked, so I just dyed over the roots in black so now I have a black white fade. Which is pretty rad. Um, get him, Kermit! Finish him. <laughs> One side of heaven and gone away, amazing songs. I might even, you know, I might even check him out. I, I keep cycling the same music these days, and I used to be a person who would listen to something different every day. Uh, I Today I'm wearing, actually, a t-shirt that I found that I forgot I owned, which is my Devon Townsend uh, Empath t-shirt. Big fan of the uh, of Townsend. <laughs> I also made my own skin. <laughs> oh, I see. Yeah, how, we, hmm. <laughs> we all make our own skin. Hello, Minecraft meme for I am here. Welcome, Mr. Townsend. Heavy Devi. I used to play, when I worked in the, the shop that shall not be named, I used to play, um, there, there was a band, I think it was Devi's, like, a brother or something, I didn't know if it had one, but uh, there was a band called Zimmer's Hole that he produced, and they had a song called Fist of Corpse, but you couldn't really tell what they were saying if you weren't initiated into sort of metal screamy voice, so I used to play it in the shop all the time. Even if a lot of people dislike him, I still listen to Marilyn Manson, I've listened to him for a couple of decades now. Ah, uh, Manson, Manson. Again, never really got into that. Um, try to think. There were a few tracks, like The Beautiful People is a good song. I like that. But yeah, I couldn't really name, I couldn't reel off a bunch of them. just don't really know. The people I hung out with were all really into Manson in that period. I was already on like... Uh, I think I was more of a Fear Factory fan at that time. Stuff like that. Super Joint Ritual, say, Man of War. Big Man of War fan back then. <laughs> this is Halloween. Ah, oh, dude! He has a statue of that shop guy. Gimme. 200 rupees. Ugh. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I kind of went this weird, weird other direction. Like, I was listening to all that power metal stuff and, and like, death metal stuff. And a lot of my peers were listening to, like, Korn and Slipknot and the stuff that was really big on uh, music TV at the time. I didn't have the luxury of watching that sort of music TV because my sister owned the TV and uh, it was all the box. Rihanna, uh, Beyonce and all that stuff, you know. That while I can appreciate the production value of, is definitely not something I would put on and listen to. Um... We can go back to town. We've finally done it. Oh. 
So there's there like a whole Nightmare Before Christmas like soundtrack with covers on it? I guess of course there is. Uh, Paramore... Paramore I do like. I only know a few songs. I only got into them in the last few years because again I did some of the stuff for Guitar Hero and I was able to really appreciate the guitar work on it. Actually, you, you could say like post-hardcore emo -y stuff. It was one of those where I would be listening to the song while I was working on it and kind of almost ironically enjoying it. And then you know what happens. You are you ironically enjoy something and then you actually genuinely start to like it. So I was like, you know what? I'm never going to be a BVB fan, but uh, I sure as hell do like uh, Pierce the Veil and Bring Me the Horizon. Yeah, shame about Chester. I listened to a lot of Linkin Park when I was a kid. Uh, random tracks, more than more than an actual album. Kind of fell off about Meteora, so you know. But my one of my favorite albums, I think, to this day, is Reanimation, which is a really, really good remix album. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba -ba. Uh, what is daytime song? Look at this. We have every single statue. The only thing we're missing is a piece of heart. I believe. Oh, this looks awesome. I don't, I don't think I've ever done this. Uh, listen to AFI. When I was a kid, uh, back in my Quake 3 Arena days, I listened to a lot of AFI and I dug it. I never liked the Rasmus. Uh, really, really not my thing. Probably one of those bands I could listen to now and be like, eh, this is fine, but I don't know, they remind me too much of Savage Garden and my mother listened to them constantly, so wasn't up to it. Link in description. Hey! <laughs> Hello, Beloved Fever. Uh, what is this reanimation shit, but now it's like the only one you listen to? Yeah, I don't know, like, I've always had this weird progressive attitude to listening to music, so I think that's why I liked it more than I liked um, something like Hybrid Theory. But uh, Hybrid Theory and uh, what was that AFI album? <sighs> I don't remember. Um, but that, those two would have been my soundtrack to Quake 3 Arena. Yeah, this, this song is a jam. By the way, um, it's been a while since we did a little item showcase, hasn't it? Has anyone here who's here not seen the custom stuff that I made for this yet, other than what you see right now? I'm gonna go and uh, deliver this statue. Oh, wait, yeah. I could deliver this statue and then I could do another showcase. Items. The AFI album is Sing the Sorrow. That was it. I remembered it. Um, about the time that came out is roughly when I was getting into that sort of stuff. Again, it's a long time ago. My taste has changed so much. I listen to more uh, sort of EDM future based stuff these days than anything else and then it, then I go and like listen to black metal for a day you know Isan or Xanthacroid uh, or I'll have a prog day where I listen to Hacken and Leprous of uh, Frost and that sort of thing and then I'll go listen to Kari Pamu Pamu eclectic taste um, Shop Guru statue we need to give to apparently Great Fish Isle Merchant, um, but he just gave it to us. I'll try it on him. 
I guess it's one of these three guys will give us a piece of heart. That's what we really want. Yep. Isn't that right, Kermit? Yes! Shit. <laughs> Never mind. Immediately jumps in the water. Look up for El Nino. Oh, I am Loco from El Nino. Yeah, I can think that. A lot of, I guess, a lot of people, especially when, um, when you're young, you listen to the stuff that you can identify with. It was a little bit different for me because I've, I didn't start listening to lyrics uh, until probably about ten years ago, because I've always just been, uh, I, I've, I listen to the voice as an instrument and the sounds, the phonetics as an instrument for years and years and years. Um, I think I started to appreciate lyrics. Uh, maybe it'll be Dream Theater. It'll be um, either Scenes from a Memory, Metropolis Part Two, or Six Degrees of Inner Turbulence. I would have started to listen to lyrics and stuff. This is a really good song. You're right, uh, Minecraft Me. I agree. This is super iconic. I actually really like the theme tune to this game, uh, the the songs that you play for Medley and Maka. Or Makar. Maka. Mwah, fucking Maka man. Yeah, yeah, I'm right there with you, Maelstrom. Totally, totally changed. Like, I occasionally go back to stuff. I've been going through my my hard disk of all the stuff that I still have on there, and most of it I just wouldn't listen to now, but I stopped off and I was like, yeah, let's stick on this Children of Bottom album and see what it's like, and I'm just... Now I'm like, yeah, there's a couple of good tunes in here, but I just can't get into it, you know? I'm glad the meds work for you, my man. Oh, listen, listen. You... Give me... Warm... Pumper Rum... Pickle Pea! Why, that's a Shop Guru statue, yeah. No, I don't want you stupid postman statue, you prick. Give me a heart piece. <laughs> Sorry, that was that was a bit harsh. I just hate having to teleport all over the place just to do this one stupid quest. It's so long. At least with the water watering the plants quest, it's just like, I know where I'm going. I kind of feel bad that this is all we did, but other than the PS5 coverage. Maybe we'll actually go and get a couple of those Triforce pieces so that next time we don't just spend a whole stream doing FA. Um, back this way. Pump a rum, pick or pee. Still listen to When Worlds Collide by Palm 5000. That is a tune. Um, there was this thing in it. That, remember it, Maelstrom, you'll know it. That fucking Final Fantasy XIV boss where Palm 5000 were like, hey, they stole our song. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty uncanny. It's the fire up music. It's, it's very, very similar, but, you know. Whatever. <laughs> To be honest, I'm more impressed that Soken would uh, would have the balls to just like straight up lift a Power Man 5000 song and put it in his game. <laughs> I jest. It's. I feel like it's heavily inspired. A 
hold out your hands. So this guy really wanted that statue. And now we have another heart container. Oh my god, was it worth it? It took us like three hours. Well, I feel slightly invigorated. Okay, let's do something else. John. We cannot return to Hyrule without first reforming a piece of Triforce. It's now our duty to gather eight Triforce shards. Alright, mate. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go to that ghost island and see if we can get on it. Uh, which is... Somewhere around here. Is it Islet of Steel? No. That's Horseshoe. There is a treasure at Horseshoe. Um, three eye Shark. Oh, actually, it might be Shark Island. But it could equally be Diamond Step Island. I guess we'll go outset and find out. Video. Let's go ignore Grandma again. Well, she's ignoring us, pretending to be asleep. So Grandma, I think after we get the Triforce pieces, Grandma will wake up and she will make some delicious soup and it fills our HP bar up and doubles our attack power. Uh, it's pretty great. Ow! I think of it, yeah. So that is, I don't know, uh... We're about to go and get the Horseshoe Isle. Five, five Eye Reef is northeast of here. We could do that. Ooh. That's... Yeah, I know where that is. Um, and Three Star Reef. Huh. Bless Granny, Grandma. Sail away on the SS Cute Rewards. What's that? That's welcome, new follower of Minecraft Meme 4. Hello, thank you for that follow. I appreciate it. Oh, he's found the vids. It's a good time to save, actually. Let's do that. Alright, let's rip VOD. I don't think I've ever heard another song by Palmer 5000. <laughs> Still a tune. Still like this. Shit, now I want to play Tony Hawk. Um, and now the other one is a fire up from... Uh, what do I say? Is it Sef Sephirat? I'm going to say Sephirat. It's a Hebrew word, so I don't actually fucking know how to pronounce it. Um, the world's died! <laughs> This is so uncanny.
Yeah, it's... Uh, come on, man. Come on. We know, you, we know you're doing so, and we know you're right now. It's fine. It's derivative. All of music is derivative. Someone did a pretty good mashup. Ooh. DMCA incoming. I oh, don't give a fuck. No one watches this shit. <laughs> Let's go let alone copyright people. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I, I hate listening to two songs at once, so I'm not going to do it now, and there's no way to turn off the sound. I suppose I could do it in Windows Mixer. But yeah, you know, go check that out. <laughs> oh shit, Kermit. Kermit, I need help. Or let's use my headphones. No, fuck you! <laughs> Time to go yo yo fishing. And this is what it's like when two souls collide! Yeah. <laughs> we did it. No, that that link uh, that Maelstrom posted is the mashup. What is this one that I tell her put in? Oh, the One Winged Angel Advent Children version. You know what? It's decent. It's a really good version of it. Because it's basically a Black Mages cover. I've heard it a million times, so uh, I won't play it here, but I... Yeah, I recommend others check it out. It's, the Advent Children soundtrack's really good. It has my f one of my favourite pieces of Final Fantasy music in it called The Promised Land which is a choral piece that doesn't show up in anywhere else other than Advent Children. And it's one of the few songs in Advent Children that doesn't directly reference uh, thematically a song from Final Fantasy VII. It just comes out of nowhere, but it's really fucking good. Um, now then. Ah, oh, that's the island I was looking for. It's They're in... I think One Wind Angel's decent. I actually think I prefer Dancing Mad as far as boss themes go. There's a lot more going on. Favourite FF7 sign. That's tough. Doing it again on a chat. I need to just play the song. Just play the fucking song. <laughs> um, I know what friend's favorite is because it never plays. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh at that, but I do. Oh, you mean a favorite FF song in general? Well, that is tough. Um. Probably something from nine. Well, the Temple of the Ancients is pretty good. Kermit, I think your time is now. If you're not a big fan of 10 2 Real Emotions, is third place. Yeah, uh, 10 2 is like, it's goofy as hell, but I kind of like it. Um, the music's totally serviceable. I say this about 13 2 a lot, actually. Um, I actually think 13, like, a lot of people don't like 13. Fine. 
it is linear i get it 13.2 fixes a lot of that stuff and is a really really cool game imo and also i think it has one of my favorite final fantasy soundtracks overall because it's a really really good mix of like hyper modern futurist electronic music and uh, cinematic orchestration and thematic Final Fantasy-esque music spread over four discs of wonderful goodness. You know, it has like, what, five composers on it. <laughs> you get a lot for you, a lot of bang for buck. I bought the soundtrack and it cost me 15 quid and I was very happy with it. Ah, this is what I was thinking of. This is what will allow us to get in the ghost ship. Eyes on me hitting them feels. Uh, um, um, um. I mean, melodies of life, because like specifically the ending credits version, because it then goes into the, like the main theme of the series, and that's just really fucking great. <laughs> what am I doing with this? Let's get in this jar. Yeah. We. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. It's it's difficult. I'm. We didn't need the bow. Ah, no, it's mine. Wait, it's mine. How do you like the power to destroy evil? The power to cheese evil. Katamari bomb. I like Xanakin more every time I listen to it. It's one of those songs where uh, everyone was playing it all the time. <laughs> and it was like, it kind of lost its charm for me a little bit. But when I go back to it, it is a really good piece of music. Promethea music. I like that one a lot. Terra's music. Oh, sorry. Terra's theme from 6, but also the music of Terra, the location in 9. Yeah, eight is hard. A man with a machine gun is solid. Um, it might be my one of my favorite overworld themes, actually. Fields. What did I pick from that. <laughs> Lunatic Pandora is good. Uh, the S star music. Alright, we're gonna destroy these jumps. Nope. Bad hand. No touchy. Bad touch. There's a piece uh, from. Godsmack's greatest hit. I've never listened to Godsmack. Um, there's a piece of music. It's kind of a spoiler. But the the final boss battle music in Lightning Returns, compositionally speaking, like as a musician, is one of the best pieces of music I've ever heard in a game. Only speaking, I speak as it as a as a compositional thing, and like just in terms of thematics, how it completely nails it. You should go to the YouTube thing, find the song "Almighty Bunavalza," and just look at the comments because there's a lot of people in the comments who are also like big music nerds who are talking about it. It's uh, it's pretty cool. It's also like a 30 minute long piece of music, and it's absolutely manic. Like, yeah, compression of time, like, it's really well composed and it perfectly fits where it is, right? That's the same with Almighty Boon of Elsa. Like, you wouldn't listen to it casually. <laughs> but, uh... Fart middies. Ah. Uh, fart middies. Yeah. 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 
That's why that's, this is why I want Demon Souls to keep the original soundtrack. Look, I'm all for reorchestration and stuff sounding amazing, but do you really think that I want to get to to a certain boss in Demon Souls and listen to a nice, lovely piece of orchestration when I could listen to this instead? If you're not aware of the Black Mages, I'm sure you are, but um, there was a, a Nobu Yamatsu did a band with some of the other people, and that version of One Winged Angel is basically a Black Mages track. They've done like three albums of that stuff. They also did Earthbound Poppers, which I've never listened to, but did randomly pick up a folder um, of an uh, anime convention that had a signed picture of Nobu Yamatsu in it, so I own that now. Please be correct. Anyway, that's enough of demon souls. You got the ghost ship chart. Nice. I think that's the item I was after. The rest of these just lead to each other. So did it. We solved puzzle. Uh -huh. Oh, you need that, you need that, like, um, Microsoft has this built in, in the Xbox games library. They have a button that basically just randomly picks a game for you. I'm sure there's a thing for Steam that does that. Why does this feel really sluggish all of a sudden? Why is my camera turning? In the boat! Yes! We did it! Okay. So we got a new chart. <gasps> it shows us where the ship is at any one time, which is nice. I think it also allows us to get in the ship. Yeah, I can't install all my games. I don't. I've got. I mean, this, this drive is full. I gotta really uh, do a retcon on it. Retcon, what am I doing? Saying that word. I need to go through it and um, revise everything that's on there. Three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, it shows up. Just, just that's way easier. Let's make this the last thing I do today on stream. We're gonna do the ghost ship. Yeah, I couldn't install all my games. Because I'm in a similar situation. Like, I have a bunch of stuff on Steam. The entire Uplay library. <laughs> and, like, Division alone and it takes up, like, some ridiculous, like, 70 gigabytes or something. I have one game on GOG, which I haven't installed, because I'm probably never going to play it again, and that was SWAT 4, <laughs> which we played together recently. Isn't that right? Ah. 
let's go do a spooky ghost ship so I can go and have some dindins. Like, I could uninstall Division and Division 2 and free up, like, easily 150 gig. But every now and then I'm like, maybe I will play it? I'm not going to play it. <laughs> I'm not going to fucking play that game again. Gosh, that's, uh, that's big for a Codemasters game. It was my job. I'm not even on that game anymore, so I don't... That's that's the thing, like, I was playing it and enjoying it after but when I was working on the expansion, but then I was like... I just don't really... because I'm not working on it anymore, I just really feel the need to go back to it. Oh, I have this. Yeah, I got, I got a few of those. I need to make room for Yakuza and Resi too. No, that's not the button I meant to press. And then I installed like all the Souls games the other week, so that took up the rest of my remaining space. Big money! Oh, I missed! <laughs> Damn it! Alright, where are my ghost boat at? There you are. No! I knew that shit was gonna happen! <laughs> Piece of... Oh god! And for anyone that wasn't aware, uh, it just became morning and the ship disappeared. I knew that was going to happen as I was sailing towards it every goddamn time. Now it's night time again. Okay, we can teleport there. That's good. That's the epoch. I don't know what that is. An RPG similar to Diablo and Pierre. Ooh, that's interesting. I do like Diablo. Pillars of Eternity was awesome. I put a note. I wonder if the Discord had that one thing, didn't they, that showed you all your games? Did they, like, scrap that off? Maybe I could just tell it to look at GOG and then have GOG look at everything else, and then it's, like, recursive. Where my boat? Where my boat? Where my boat at? Probably around the other side. I took a step back from the game side. Yeah, it felt a bit bloated. Maybe that's why. There might only be one specific location where we can actually get on this boat, and I think I know where it is. I think it's Crescent Moon Isle. I guess we'll see. I have the map now. Oh no, yep, there we go. We're in. We're in. Ghost boat. <gasps> Ghost boat. Nice. 
Nice. Ow. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Spooky ghost emote. Oh, oh, good work. Well, that was stressful. Look at this face. So, holy shit, this is a lot of rupees. Still sitting on that money I got from selling my Steam cards in my account as well. Probably next month I'm gonna pick something up. Like, oh, I could put it towards Horizon, but I can still get it cheap on PS4. I did want to put it towards um, Command and Conquer Remaster. It looks like they did a good job with that. And we get a Triforce chart. Oh. Whose idea was it to hide a Triforce chart on a ghost ship? I'm looking at you, King! Alright, I think that's it. I'll just have one quick look at that, which we have to interpret. I'll teleport. No, I don't. I'll just go there. We'll go to Tingle Island, we'll save, and I'll be done for today. And then I'm gonna go and eat some food, and then we'll probably. I don't know, maybe play some duck sauce. Tingle's island head keeps disappearing. <laughs> then we see, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go. I wanna play some more duck stars. Really need to get through three. Now that we've done Nano Orlando. Banana Orlando. Right, this is where I'll save. In the flowers. I'm now immediately really hungry. Ah! Well, that's it. I won't, won't bother with the raid today just because I don't feel like it. So, uh. <laughs> Pew! Pew! Pew!